Hi guys, I'm Matt Hetherington from mhtabletennis.com and on my road to making 30 table tennis tutorial videos in 30 days, I'm taking a little bit of a detour today to look at an aspect of table tennis that's usually done away from the table and that is the physical training element of table tennis. If you want to get to higher levels in table tennis, you have to train like an athlete and physical training is an imperative part of improving your overall table tennis game. So this is about building strength and stamina, explosive power, flexibility, all of these things combine to help you train better, help you perform better in matches. Now I'm going to look at different parts of the body in a few different videos. Um, today I want to focus a little bit on the core and exercising the core area. Now it's important to note these are some ideas about core exercises that you might use. Um, they're some of the ones that I use personally. I'm not a physical trainer, I'm not a personal trainer, I'm not qualified to be telling you what you should do or what you have to do. Um, these are more just some suggestions about different exercises that you can add to your core training regime. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go through what I would do in my core exercise regime and hopefully that'll give you some ideas. But again, I'm just here to give some suggestions about what you could include. And certainly not an expert in the area of physical training, um, but I've picked up a few things here and there. So buckle in and we'll go through each exercise and give a brief explanation and then get into it. One of the things that people ask me a lot is whether there are certain exercises that they can do that are table tennis specific. And it's a difficult question to answer because table tennis involves a lot of small mechanics, um, but there are some broader things that you can think about. And one of them is the speed of your core rotation. So being able to activate your core muscles at a very high pace and being able to have that explosive twisting power is really important, especially for topspin situations um, and especially on your forehand side. So one of the exercises that I like doing is to lean back a little bit. You can have your feet off the ground if you want, it makes it a little bit harder. And you're going to get some kind of weight where you can just put your hands on the ground and you're going to twist all the way until you feel a pull on this side of your core and then all the way back and you're going to count that as one here and if you can do three sets of 30 or if you're feeling like you need more of a challenge three sets of 50 and you're trying to do them as quick as you possibly can really helps to add some weight to it um, so that you're having to really strain and push using your core with some resistance against it. Um, but this is a great exercise for helping with table tennis, having that rotation, um, rotation exercise. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to do three sets of 30. <laughs> It's also important when you're doing this exercise that you're not trying to move with your arms. You want to keep your arms fairly stationary. So you're going to hold whatever weight you have out in front of you and then use your core to turn rather than moving your hands. Okay, so it's very centered and focused on core rotation. <laughs> Apart, and you're going to hold this more above your head and you're going to use the momentum of throwing without actually throwing out when you guys putting holes in your windows or damaging things so you're going to hold on to it but you're going to use a kind of throwing momentum to bring the ball or the weight up between your knees so it's it's a little bit different there's a little bit more core resistance on the way down because of the weight 
and the fact that your arms are spread out more. Um, but using the momentum from the weight on the swing forward is kind of like a little bit of an assist for doing sit-ups. that don't require any additional weight and we're going to start with the leg raise. So uh, one of the ones that I like to do regularly, which is a little bit less stress on your body, where you know like sit ups and things like that, quite intense, uh, is doing scissor kicks. So you can do vertical and horizontal scissor kicks. So you're gonna lie on your back, um, put your feet up straight. You're gonna bring your feet up a little. Now you can do vertical scissor kicks, which are this way and your foot almost touches the ground and you can also do horizontal center kicks where you bring your feet out and then cross one over the other and then reverse Another good exercise that I like to do is the uh, leg extensions. So you would sit with your knees in closer like this, a little bit closer. You're gonna put your hands facing forward behind you on a non-slippery surface. And you're gonna try and keep your knees together and then you're gonna extend out. do these kinds of exercises a lot of the time especially when you're having to extend your legs you might start to feel some deficiencies in areas that are not stretched properly or haven't been conditioned properly like for example when I'm doing these exercises a lot of the time I feel a lot of tightness in my hip flexors um, which is a huge problem for me with my posture and um, I've definitely been trying to do a lot more conditioning and uh, stretching with my hip flexors recently. Um, but yeah, you'll when you're working out in these situations, you will feel if there's more pain in certain areas than others, it's usually a sign that there is a either a technical problem with how you're doing the exercise or a deficiency in conditioning. Um, and you really want to focus on those areas because uh, obviously, avoiding injury is very important in sports. Um, so, one more set of leg extensions and then we'll move on to the next thing. The other thing that you should be adding a little bit of is some core stability uh, exercises. And usually people think of planks. You can do four like straight planks, side planks for your obliques. Uh, okay, so you can bring a lot of different adaptations to a regular plank. So you can start off in a prone position and then obviously you can do 
side planks, which are this way. You can also do extended side planks up on one arm. And you can do uh, transitions between them. So you can do a forward plank and then hold for 30 seconds and then transition to one side, hold for 30 seconds, transition back to your normal plank, 30 seconds, to the opposite side, 30 seconds, and then back down for 30 seconds more. not to disconnect it and not to let yourself fall to the ground obviously or any reset it's continuous transition between each part and you can uh, you can shorten to like 10 to 15 seconds and increase the number of transitions if you want um, it depends how much you want to focus on movement and how much you want to focus on stability. As you can see, there are a number of different exercises that you can use for your core. That's just a drop in the pond. If you go on Google or you look at YouTube videos, there are so many different variations of core exercises to keep you changing up your routines and keep you entertained while you're suffering. <laughs> um, but it's definitely something that you should be working on while you're at home. If uh, there are people out there that are stuck at home and not able to train, focus on your physical training. Make sure you get a good routine that works on different parts, explosiveness, speed, stability, all different aspects of the, um, the core and functions of the core. And hopefully some of these exercises might be useful to you if you haven't already been doing them. Like I said, I'm, I'm sure you've seen from my video, I am far from an expert in doing physical training, um, but I do my best and I've been keeping it up during quarantine. So hopefully you guys can also take a little bit out of this video and get to working more on your own core as it's a very important part of table tennis. So good luck and enjoy the pain.